Hi, it's me, Dr. Britton Bradbury again, here at Advanced Veterinary Care in Silver City, New Mexico. And the video today that we made is gonna go through the post-op instructions for your patient that just had an orthopedic procedure. And this is a pretty generic uh, group of instructions. However, what we've learned is 90% of the time, these instructions fit almost any orthopedic procedure that you're gonna have. The first thing we're gonna start with is just the medications that are gonna be going to be sent home with the patient. The first thing we're going to send home is an antibiotic. We feel like it's pretty important for the patient to be on antibiotics for at least about a week period of time. They're also going to be sent home on a combination of pain medications. There's going to be an anti-inflammatory and some other strong pain meds. There's no reason for the patient to be in pain and therefore we're going to make sure that they have everything they need to get through this healing process very comfortably. Resting is by far going to be probably the most vital thing that we can do during the healing process. Most of these cases required us to make some kind of cut inside the bone, put some sort of implant, and we need that to heal properly. I say in all my surgical cases, it's really the biology that's going to fix this uh, leg, um, not me. And so it's going to take about eight weeks, no running, no jumping, no rough housing. Now during those eight weeks, I think it's very important for the patient to use these uh, the leg that's affected. I do want them to go on leash walks. It starts off as sort of just a short leash walk, go to the bathroom, smell around, come back inside. And you can do that multiple times a day. Every week, we're gonna to try to increase that walk a little bit more, a little bit more. It's not a race. Some of these dogs, by the end of the two months, are going on a two mile walk. Some of these dogs are going on a quarter mile walk. The important part is the time period, that eight weeks, no running, no jumping, no rough housing. Next thing on the list is going to be icing. This can be very beneficial uh, to the patient and we're going to get the most benefit about three to four days post-op. We're going to want to do it about five to ten minutes a couple times a day. Always make sure there's some kind of cloth barrier um, before we put down the ice pack. Again, five to ten minutes a couple times a day. After that, Icing is not going to benefit us a whole lot. We're better off to switch to what we call warm compress. And we're going to uh, want to do that for about a, a, a week period of time. Again, five to 10 minutes, a couple times a day. All right, so we're going to use the lovely caddy here as her model. She's pretty slow, uh, sweet and laid back for us. A lot of the surgeries we do are going to be on the back end here. On the smaller dogs, a lot of times incisions right here. On the bigger dogs, it's right about there. But I like to put some kind of washcloth or some kind of uh, barrier there. And then I like to make a mixture of rubbing alcohol, one part rubbing alcohol to three or four parts water. It's nothing magical, but it makes more of a slush and then it, it forms around it, the leg much better than just a, a hard ice pack. Again, five to 10 minutes, twice a day for about three to four days. After we're done with the icing period, the three or four day period of icing, we're going to go ahead and switch to the warm compress. You can again use your washcloth, you can put it in the dryer. If you have one of those rice packs that you put in the microwave, that's fine too. As always, just make sure it's not too hot. Same thing, you're just going to want to lay it on that area five to ten minutes. This time, um, about a week period of the warm compress. After that, you're done with this. So we talked about compression and elevation was sort of difficult in the vet world. What we found that works really well is actual massaging the leg. And we're going to show a video right here kind of explaining how to do that. We're not going to be doing any kind of shiatsu or, or really working out knots. It's more of a lymphatic massage where we're moving things from the wrist or the ankle area up past the next joint, elbow or knee, up to shoulder. and. Um, the hip. We're always pushing the fluid upwards towards the heart. And what we have found is the massaging has really made a world of difference. And so ultimately when it comes to your part of what can I do to help this patient heal properly, it's generally giving them their medications properly, resting them properly, and that massage is probably the three most important things. And so this next segment is going to be more of the don'ts, the, the issues that we've definitely had uh, problems with. But you're going to start on here and you're going to push, you're not going to barely touch it, you're going to actually push it. And you start all the way down there and push it. And what will happen 
is as we do this, the dog will eventually start to put its leg down because it feels good. But everybody's kind of scared of it. There you go. See how he starts dropping his leg? Because it feels much better to him to go ahead and, and get that movement, that swelling pushed upwards. So one of the biggest complications we have in orthopedic surgery is the doorbell. Everything seems fine, everybody's just hanging out. <laughs> Everything's going along perfectly fine, and then the doorbell rings, you saw what happened. So if you have a dog that's very reactive, I'm a big fan of, of disabling the doorbell, putting a note on the uh, door that says, day sleeper, do not disturb. Um, those complications that, that arise are usually these quick jerky movements, putting a lot of force in there. We have had fractures in the past and uh, serious complications due from a reactive job jumping up. The other issue is if you have that reactive dog, sometimes it is best to put him in a kennel. I know that's not fun. I know it's kind of sad. Um, I tell people all the time, even when I had surgery, I remember having to sit there on the bench and watch all my friends play the game. It, it is what it is. If you could fast forward in about two months, they're healed, then they can run, jump, and play and do whatever they uh, want. But if you're concerned at all, it may be best to put the patient in a kennel during the healing process. Now again, they aren't locked up there and they don't get to have any fun. You do take them out, take them on these walks, let them enjoy life. But if all else fails, let's have them in a place where they can't jump up, spring, and cause a serious issue to the surgery. When the patient is discharged the next morning, it's very common to see some bruising and some swelling there on the, the surgical site. The incision itself, all the sutures are inside uh, the skin, so they're absorbable. You're not gonna have to put any kind of cream, salves, or anything like that. But it is really important that the patient still doesn't lick at it. They are sent home with an e-collar. Now, nobody really likes these. However, if we leave them on during that 10 to 14 day period, then we can allow it to heal properly without any issues at all. Now, I know what's gonna happen is the second you get home, you're gonna take this e-collar off. That's fine. When you're with the patient, I don't care if you take it off, but when you're not around them, that means at nighttime, or you just have to run the store, or you're on the phone and you're not paying attention, you need to put that e-collar back on, again, for that 10 to 14 day period. Just like doorbells are an issue, we have a lot of obstacles that can be in the way of the healing process. Here in the Southwest, we deal with a lot of tile and uh, hardwood floors, and therefore anything that is slick or will stumble them out, uh, stairs, steps, things like this, we definitely want to avoid during that eight week process. Again, once the patient's healed, then it's awesome. They can do whatever they want. But during this healing process, anything that can make them stumble, fall, or crash out, we certainly want to avoid. Now, right after surgery, a lot of these patients go home uh, still limping. They're still a little tender on those legs. It's very common for the patients to uh, be toe touching, but not wanting to put a lot of weight on it. Due to this, the anesthesia, the epidural, it's very common for our patients not to want to defecate for three to four days post-op. If they're not in a severe amount of pain, if they don't seem like they're straining, if they are still eating normally, then everything's gonna move on through. But usually about day two to day three, I get this call wondering what's going on. And I always tell people, if you keep feeding them and they're eating just fine, it's all gonna work itself out. Now back to the 10 to 14 day period, that's a pretty important recheck for me. I don't expect you guys to have to come down and see me. You're always welcome uh, at no charge. But what I find works best is if you'll take a picture of the incision, you're gonna have my cell phone, take a picture of that incision and text it to me and, and let me know how the patient's going. If you wanna send me a video of the patient walking or moving, even better. That two week recheck, one lets us see, is the skin healed properly and can we take that e-collar off? And two, if we have a video uh, that goes with it, it lets me see where the patient's uh, 
on the rehab scale, how well they're using it, if we're gonna have to do some kind of rehab. We do have video links if that's necessary, but usually if we're doing the small short walks by that two week period, they're already using it very well.